Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors 110 to 107 win, Riker against the Dallas Mavericks. What was this game? This was this was absolutely wild. I I'm still shook from from what just happened. Well, the Raptors Digest version, Ben. First ever 30-point comeback in Raptors franchise mm -hmm. history. Largest comeback ever. I believe their second most was 25. This is the first 30-point comeback in the NBA in at least 10 years. I think 10 years exactly. And if you turned it off in the third quarter, which Ben and I had both been discussing, we were teetering with the idea, you would have missed something special, Ben. You would have missed Full Court Trap, Malcolm Miller, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Chris Boucher, going crazy and the one and only Kyle Lowry he's been the the object of great debate should he or should he not stay on the Raptors should he be a trade piece well Ben you'd be crazy after tonight to ever consider getting rid of this man what a legend what a game yeah well we've both you and I have said it had have to be something lucrative for the Raptors to make a move for Lowry and after tonight I would even if we got LeBron James or something I'd be mad if we traded Kyle Lowry because 32 points 10 assists, 8 rebounds, just an absolutely ridiculous performance, and this this is what Kyle Lowry can do. He is one of those guys that can get you timely points when you need when you need buckets, and this was just ex hyperbolized tonight in the performance he did in the fourth quarter, because shot after shot, he was banging threes off screens, there was a point he was being triple teamed by the Mavericks, and he still made a step back, he was shaking people to get in the lane, hitting and ones, I... Everything you could ask, could have asked for from Kyle. He's taking charges as well on the defensive end. Everything that could have possibly helped this team, it, Kyle Lowry did it. It was just a remarkable stretch for him, especially in the fourth quarter tonight. It, it was cerebral, out of body, Ben. This was absolutely crazy. 20 points in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. to really capitalize what he was able to do. But I think the most defining moment of this game was he was getting interviewed post-game and mm -hmm. gives all the credit to the four bench guys that were really yep. the catalyst for this. I mean, getting steals, we'll talk about it, but getting steals consistently mm -hmm. in a full-court trap against an NBA team of all teams, right? This yep. is the easiest thing to break is a full-court trap with good ball movement, but no, the Raptors were able to shut it down consistently, and Kyle Lowry specifically, you hit on all the points, taking charges, but doing all the intangible things he always does. But Ben, tonight his confidence was on another level. Step back three after step back three. Mm -hmm. Then when the doubles and the triples came, confidently took it to the basket. He had a couple finishes over Finney Smith that were absolutely absurd. And he didn't look tired. You know, Kyle Lowry, yeah. he's been, they've been running them all season long for season after season. His athleticism was not in question tonight. He looked good out there. Yeah, the only the only time he looked tired during this game was in the post game interview, which makes sense because he laid it all on the line. Forty two minutes for him. The, no one else on the team played over thirty, and you know everyone thought they were just gonna run Kyle with the bench for the first start of the quarter and then see what happens. But Lowry hit some threes, TD hit some threes. People just the shots were going down. Shots are going down. The defense just amped up. You brought it up. The full court trap that the Raptors ran. Nick Nurse made the, if you're trying to come back, if you're trying to switch it up, a full court trap is a great way of doing it. And they got a lot of points out of it. And with Hustle, Jefferson, TD, all guys, Malcolm Miller played ridiculous defense. We're going to dive more into the bench after, but the, just the, the way that they, they pushed the Mavericks, got them out of their comfort zone. It was great to see. And then Nick Nurse, He's he's learning to use these defensive schemes more effectively this season because a couple times the Mavericks beat it, and instead of reverting back into what we did in the first half in regular man-to-man -man defense, he, he went to a half-court kind of heavy trap where they were doubling at the top, and that switch, because Nick Nurse changed that weird defensive scheme to another weird defensive scheme, the Mavericks stayed shook, and you know they couldn't adjust to what the Raptors were doing on the defensive end. Ben, you said a couple times they only broke... This, the trap once where mm. um who was it Seth Curry did a little handoff pass to Finney Smith who had the, yeah. the open dunk and that's what usually happens after you run a few um, mm. sets of the full court trap because teams know how to adjust they they just slow down they calm down they rely on their passing they break it and then you like you said then you switch to something else but the way that the Raptors were able to consistently shut uh, the Mavericks down possession after possession 
full court, half court. I, I don't know if you can attribute it to just NBA teams are not used to that style of defense, but I, I think mm. rather, you know, Malcolm Miller, he is a long body. Ronnie Hollis Jefferson, you know what he's going to give you. Uh, Chris Boucher, he blocked two three-pointers tonight, and yeah. he blocked a, a pivotal lob pass to Kristaps Porzingis, which would have been an easy bucket, right? The hustle out there, I, This is if you want to pick a group of guys to run a full court or half court trap with, you know, guys that are going to put it all out on the line, it's those that collective group of players mm-hmm. that is best suited for it. Long, lanky, scrappy, and motivated to stop the ball. Yeah, certainly. Let's, let's dive more into this bench unit because especially when Lowry's playing with the bench unit, it didn't really happen a lot last season, but Lowry has a way of elevating the players around him. And the, the bench players have been doing playing, stepping into games for this Raptors team throughout the course of the season and playing well, but it was just extremified with Lowry out there in the fourth. But Chris Boucher, 21 points, seven rebounds, two, uh, two steals, four blocks, as you mentioned. He was an absolute beast down low. He had Porzingis shook in the fourth quarter when they when they subbed him back in. Boucher played remarkable. Your favorite player, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, 18 points, 9 rebounds, getting offensive board after offensive board. He was finishing in the lane, doing the things we saw Rondé do when he was getting consistent minutes. TD with 9 points and some of the, the greatest timely threes in the fourth. And 5 rebounds, 2 assists. And Malcolm Miller, you look at the box score, you say 0 points. 404 shooting. Malcolm Miller, if you if you you know, we've we haven't seen much of Malcolm Miller on the court, but if you were to attribute his main skill, it'd be shooting. He's more of a of a bucket getter guy, a spot up shooter. And tonight, he didn't he couldn't shoot. He had probably his worst shooting performance in a game he's played minutes in, but the defense he, play, he played, the energy, his just effect, his ability to swing the ball, knowing to where to be on the court. He looked like a full-time NBA veteran out there. It was those four guys were just remarkable, Riker. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. This is a perfect game, like I said, for Rondé Hollis Jefferson because he is a hustle player, right? And that's yep. what you need in a full court press. Chris Boucher, finally, he is a weapon out there because yep. the the Mavericks they have big guys, but none of them are dominating in mass, right? None of them are going to be able to push necessarily mm-hmm. Boucher around. Aside from Boban, who doesn't play. Boban, who doesn't play, and they didn't yep. even really look to put Kristaps in the post. Maybe that's not his mm-hmm. game so much, but I was most impressed, the same as you, with Malcolm Miller, and it's because of that sneaky stat, the plus-minus. It is a really good indicator of what you're able to do out there without saying that, without looking at anything else in the box score. He was crucial to this um, you know, this, this lineup that, that led to the comeback, but also mm-hmm. been four steals, right? He had his yep. hand on everything. I think every time that there was a, a pick uh, on one of the long court passes or even just on the double teams, it was Malcolm Miller that had a hand on the ball. Um, you, you're you hypothesizing that you might see him get played a little bit more now in the season. Do you think that this is maybe his golden ticket to get a bit more playing time now, Ben? Well, if he, because the thing about Malcolm Miller is he's a shooter. He, he's shown that he's a shooter for the Toronto Raptors, but the question was, can he do anything else? Because he's never really established himself as a top-notch defender, so to speak. He's pretty long. Well, he's never had time. It's player. hard to do that in the yeah, scrub Yeah, for minutes. sure. Most definitely, right? So he's really only shown to be a shooter, and you weren't really sure about everything else. And the Raptors are too good of a team to be... We have so many players, right? We're trying to give opportunity to, opportunities to. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, who's shown everything on the court aside from three-point shooting, he's still struggling to get minutes. So Malcolm Miller, but if he continues to play like this, it's, you know, on top of the shooting we know he can bring, it's going to be tough to keep him out of the floor. And Nick Nurse mentioned at the beginning of the year that... Miller's a guy he'd like to see in the rotation, the way he's performed in, in games, but unfortunately, we're just too deep this season. But, Riker, we said it after all the injuries happened, right? That the Toronto Raptors are going to win games off scrappiness, grit, defense, the same way they were losing, uh, no, not losing, winning games with Kyle Lowry and Sergi Bacow. The energy picked up, the, the just intensity, the way they played. That's the level that they have to be at to beat teams. And the Dallas Mavericks, I know they didn't have Luka Doncic, but they're a really strong team. They're 19-10 in a tough Western Conference. We can beat anybody playing like this. Absolutely, Ben. It almost seems like the Raptors are more sure of themselves when there's a few injured players in the roster because then you don't have that pressure to accommodate everyone Mm -hmm. who has, for you know, more or less, proven themselves at some yep. point, whether this season or last. So I think that this is a good opportunity now for guys like Malcolm Miller to get out there, show what they can do. 
I mean, we have a back-to-back now. Tomorrow against Indiana, another tough opponent. And then, mm. uh, what, one day break? And then we're playing the Celtics at Christmas time. So this is going to be a really interesting stretch of basketball, Ben, because, I, you know, everyone always counts us out. The media counts us out. Sometimes we count ourselves out. But this Raptors team, they're deep, like you said, and they're talented. So this is some fun basketball, especially tonight that we completed the comeback. Yeah, certainly. There's... This is the most stressful last three minutes of a game I've seen in a while because you make that big comeback and you get a lead. Then you just hate to see you lose it. But the the Raptors thankfully pulled it out due to some heroics and all that. And let's 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 get into the segments, Riker. The spicy P lay of the day because it's not going to be the spicy P lay of the day tonight. It's going to be the spicy P lays, the spicy P quarter, so to speak, because uh, there was thousands of plays we could bring up. Kyle Lowry hit about four contested threes in the fourth that were just remarkable shots. He the game what ended up being the game winner when he drove in and handed it off to Boucher, who just crammed it down. Riker, you you bring up some more. Oh Ben, you know it. it that entire fourth quarter I, for me, yep. I was checked in in the first and I zoned out after we started to go on that terrible slump then that mm-hmm. into our fourth quarter we can give the spicy pile because yeah. wow you know just to see that kind of defense in the modern nba and to cap a comeback like that i i have remarkable. a it, it, remarkable and it could go towards the spicy pile but i'd rather put it towards the ogs oh, ben so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it going not all plays can be the spicy pile some make it say oh geez and tonight there's also a few but for me you talked about timely super timely mega timely terrence ross threes but one made me say oh geez he got the ball and before he even finished turning he was shooting falling into him i don't think he saw that tim hardaway jr was on his back and almost had him swatted from behind and it was nothing but net ben it was one of the sweetest jumpers i've seen and we were down like that is a gutty confident shot and yeah. if that well, hadn't gone it in it wasn't terrence ross Riker. Terrence, terrence davis, davis. <laughs> yeah listen terrence ross could never hit a shot like that let's be real <laughs> he'd never have the confidence he'd have the confidence but that would be a brick terrence davis <laughs> absolutely throwing bombs out there ben it's beautiful but it maybe i was worried yep yeah, that that was definitely one of the positive because he had some great shots in the fourth too I, I was surprised to see he only had nine points at the end of this one because the threes he hit, they felt like they were 12 points each. One one was a was a quick trigger on the right wing, and the second one, off a steal. Yep, there was, it looked like he got blocked, and he still made it. So, shout out to Terrence Davis, man. as an undrafted rookie in his rookie season. You know, it took Fred a full year to really get integrated into the team. Terrence Davis has just come out and been a complete baller. Another kind of negative OGs we can throw to a guy that played well. Malcolm Miller in the corner. The Raptors were just continuing. They they were unstoppable for a stretch until maybe the last two minutes where everything completely slowed down, which happens at the end of close games. But one thing that could have been the dagger with about two minutes ago, I believe the Raptors up by three or four or maybe even five. And Malcolm Miller got the, there was a perfect, beautiful swing possession. And Malcolm Miller got the ball for an open corner three. And then he unfortunately missed it and that, that that really hurt because the game ended up staying really close. He played a remarkable game up until that point, but as a shooter, you would have liked to see him knock down that three. Yeah, and we're both back, back home for Christmas in Newfoundland. Mm-hmm. I was watching this yep. one with the family, my mother, and yep. I was giving her the background on Malcolm Miller, said that's the guy you want to hit a timely shot. You want to see. He's been yep. on this team for so long. He's never played any significant minutes. That one would have been sweet, but I still think he put in a really solid quarter, Ben, and I think you definitely agree. Oh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, I was watching the game with my family, too. You know what my parents are like, Riker? They're probably bigger Raptor fans than me, and it was it was a complete racket. I'm sure everyone <laughs> listening, it was, it was just a wild time to be a Raptors fan watching this game, but... You know, not all positives to take away from this game. And, you know, they, we have to give out some infamous, the one and only, the only Demari Carroll Gold Star Award. And, you know, we've, we haven't really talked about the first three quarters of this game, but he, there, that, that goes to the first three quarters of the game. Because Ibaka, OG, Fred, Fred's coming off of injury. And we know that it takes games to come back from injury. We saw it with Kyle. We saw it with Serge. We can't throw players under the bus after two, three, four games after coming off an injury, but Fred wasn't good tonight. McCaw started the first quarter pretty good and then t- tapered off in the third and all that, but yeah. The, we're just going to forget about the first three quarters of this game. <laughs> it's just, yeah, here's the gold star and goodbye, everyone. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. certainly, but Riker, 
I'm still I'm still energized from this one. The Raptors, it's a really exciting stretch of games. Hopefully this this one didn't take too much energy out of them for the Pacers game tomorrow. And then obviously we play on Christmas. That's it, Ben. That is it. It's gonna be an exciting stretch. And you saw Mark Cuban on the sidelines today. I can't mm-hmm. imagine that life as a billionaire is very hard, but this might have been one of the, the worst days in his recent time. I can't imagine yep. that being a Mavericks fan. This one was very fun to watch. Yeah, certainly. It was I don't know. It was it was a wild game. And one last thought before we ended off. Do you see the the Raptors? They kind of played highlights of that Detroit Pistons win with Jared Bayless and Andrea Bargnani when they I did indeed. Yeah, that was that was a throwback. I remember watching that game as a kid. That was I'm still a kid, but it looked like they still had Ben Wallace. Was that the Bad Boy Pistons, or is that a little bit before? Oh time? no, was, this was after after the the Bad Boys. I think Ben Wallace is still on the team, but or not the not obviously not the Bad Boys. But you're talking about the Chauncey Billups team and all that. The Chauncey Billups. Yeah. Um, what's his name? The championship. Uh, it had Chauncey Billups, and he had like, a guy with um, the glasses. He would wear the Rip goggles. Hamilton. Rip yeah. Hamilton. Tory ben Wallace. Prince. Print. That wasn't the Bad Boy? Tayshaun Prince. Pistons? Yeah, there we go. They were like the Bad Boy 2.0, weren't they? 2.0, yeah. The Bad Boys were, were uh, Isaiah Thomas yeah, and Bill Lennon. Yeah, that was a lot. Yeah, but that was a long well, time we, ago. We had the Bad Boy Raptors, right? Andrea Bargnani, <laughs> Jared Bayless. I don't even know who else was on that roster. Maybe Young Demar. <laughs> I just remember <laughs> Jared Bayless either. going off at the end of that game. We came back from 25. But that game has been top tonight in this one versus the Mavericks. We. We're gonna end it here after a little a little ramble throwback. But if you remember that game, that was those were the days with the uh, with the man's Jared Bayless. But you're the best for making this fire. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Riker, you have any last words? Pacers tomorrow, Ben. Cheers. Woo.